Hey, what is up, everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you with the uh, Hell in the Cell 2015 post show. Uh, talking about everything that went down during the show where we saw, um, I guess you can say, eight matches. Seven of them on the pay-per-view, one of them on the pre-show. Um, because of the fact that I was at the WWE uh, NXT show here in Sacramento and I, and I watched this show, I got home relatively about 9 to 9.30 when I started the show. I ended it at about midnight. I did not go back and watch the pre-show. I did watch the highlights that played during the pay-per-view. Um, during this, uh, Ziggler, Cesaro, and Neville were able to get the win via the uh, the Red Arrow over Rusev, Sheamus, and Kink Barrett. I don't honestly think that I missed anything there, but uh, when you talk about the seven matches that were on the pre-show, you can honestly say that this was a good show. It wasn't bad. At no point was I reaching for the uh, remote to fast forward because I was watching on the on-demand. Um, but there was never really a time when I was just like pumped up, you know, just really excited um, about what was going on uh, during the show. Um, you know, there, there's moments that you're always going to remember. You're always going to remember Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar in the Hell in a Cell. I'm not 100% sure that this match is better than their last Hell in a Cell, but in the history of WWE, they don't really act like that Hell in a Cell match matters or, you know, ever happened in the history of WWE. They sort of treat that as ancient history. But if you go back on your network and you watch the, uh, I believe it's No Way Out 2002, I think that match is better. But this match was good too. I don't want to take anything away from it. And of course, you're always going to remember Alberto Del Rio uh, coming back and, and beating uh, John Cena. He was gone from the WWE for about a year um, before making his return. Of course, in the downtime, he worked for Ring of Honor. He worked for AAA. He worked for Lucha Underground. Um, so he, he's a big piece that WWE was missing. Of course, they just went on that Mexican tour. Um, they had to bring The Undertaker back from his, uh, I guess you can say, yearly hiatus. Um, and he wrestled matches with Kane because he needed some sort of a, a draw in order to compete against all of the different Mexican wrestling organizations that were down there and trying to get that money uh, to be you know, put in their pocket and uh, you know make a good payday down there. But um, I, I guess in the long run, I, I think within a month, we're going to be able to tell if this Del Rio return is real or if this is just sort of something that they did to spice up the show. We have to find out, does WWE really want Alberto Del Rio to be Alberto Del Rio and be a part of WWE? Or did they just want Alberto Del Rio because so many different wrestling organizations wanted him and um, they didn't want him to have him. They just, they just want him to have him just to have him. They don't want him to go anywhere else or wrestle for anybody else. Um... But this is a big piece. I mean, if they use him right, he could be good. But it's sort of like with Del Rio, WWE almost treats this guy like every once in a while we, we want to have you here. But then there becomes times when they don't really want anything to do with this guy. He just basically gets thrown aside. And then they have to try and heat him up from uh, the middle of nowhere. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But uh, uh, Del Rio comes back. He beats John Cena in the opener. Big surprise. He's going to be with Zeb now. And uh, Cena's going to be going off taking his vacation, and uh, we'll see him when he comes back uh, for TLC, I guess. And hopefully Del Rio will have the United States Championship still, and uh, we'll see uh, a rematch for these guys. Uh, from there, we go to Roman Reigns against Bray Wyatt, and a little bit of a slow-paced home of cell. There was a lot of tables in there. There was a lot of action with them, you know, hanging chairs from the cell, you know, hanging uh, uh, kendo sticks in the corner and all sorts of things. Roman gets the win. Um, now that I'm sort of putting things together, maybe Roman doesn't even get to get away from Bray Wyatt because I'm guessing that it's going to be Undertaker, um, you know, teaming up with people going up against the Wyatts. And if so, you know, who's really going to team up with Undertaker other than Kane? Who's going to, you know, complete this foursome? Is it going to be Ambrose uh, and Reigns with Taker and Kane going up against... Um, the Wyatt family? If so, he didn't really get away from Bray, and this Hell in the Cell feud didn't really end anything. Um, from there we go to the New Day, beating the Dudley Boys, um, relatively clean, in order to uh, keep their tag team titles. Uh, the Dudleys have failed in three attempts to get out to get those titles, so we'll have to see what WWE is building up for in those guys. If, if they don't win it at Survivor Series, they're not winning it at all. It's not like the tag team division in WWE was really hot. You know, you've got the uh, the Lucha Dragons, you've got the uh, primetime players. 
And that's really all I can really think of in the tag team division. So maybe the Dudley boys and the New Day just automatically go at it again. Maybe the Dudley boys don't need to beat anybody in a number one contenders match. But the New Day does, you know, have something to say that, you know, they beat the Dudleys uh, without Xavier Woods being there. And um, they did it relatively clean. Uh, Charlotte beat Charlotte beat uh, Nikki Bella in a very very good Divas match, possibly one of the best Divas matches that we've seen in a long time. Um, you know, hats off to them. Seth Rollins uh, makes easy work of Kane, uh, basically making it where Corporate Kane will no longer be a part of WWE. He has lost his role of Director of Operations, but I'm thinking that we're going to be seeing a lot more of Demon Kane from here on out. Uh, Kevin Owens uh, beats Ryback relatively easy, and then in the main event. Brock Lesnar beats Undertaker uh, with a uh, you know three F5s, a few suplexes, um, a whole lot of blood, and um, Undertaker, of course, hitting a um, tombstone. This will probably be like an oh my god match that's probably remembered for a long time because of Brock Lesnar pulling a Nexus and just basically ripping up the ring and uh, you know just making a statement uh, that he wanted to show that he is the uh, biggest, baddest beast. Inside of WWE, I guess I finished my Gatorade, my Tropical Cooler. I didn't even realize it. I was looking for a drink. I was getting a little bit thirsty, but uh, it's gone. But um, fun, fun stuff. I'll put the uh, day in the life up of uh, uh, going to the next tea show in the in the morning, uh, and then I'll probably make the video tomorrow as well, talking about you know the day number two because as you can hear, the voice is a little bit shot. 